Hello everyone, my name is Josh Diaz. I'm a video producer and videographer here in the city of Winnipeg. And today I wanna to show you what's in my camera bag. This is the Shape S bag. It's a camera bag that's pretty highly renowned in the, the videographer space. It's got a lot of storage space. Some would say too much storage space. And I really like it because it allows me to carry my camera gear with me when I can go to a shoot to do location scouting or if I wanna carry my camera on me when I'm doing some type of production. Now, if you're a solo camera operator or you like to travel relatively light, a bag like this is gonna do you pretty well. So let's walk through what exactly I pack in my Shape S bag. So over here on the left-hand side, I start with all my writing utensils. There's a nice little pocket on the side. I'm not gonna show you this, but this is my contact information. It's pretty valuable to have on a bag with incredible valuables. So if it wasn't obvious already, the shape bag is great because it comes in a bunch of modular pieces, some that fit on the side, the back, the top, and even inside, there's an optional expander kit, which allows you to just divvy up the insides moreover. So this is the first part of the shape bag. It's okay. So what fell was my measuring tape. Uh, this is just for measuring the distance between the camera lens and whatever I'm filming. We have a series of writing utensils for writing on scripts, writing on shot dockets. I, I don't know. I will never be unprepared in terms of what I'm looking to write with all of these writing utensils, but that's not where it stops. There's also pockets behind the pens, which is great. But the real winner, I would say, is the large pocket right in the middle here, which I'm storing a variety of things. I mean, you can have notepads. It is a working camera bag, so there's a bit of a mess. Notepads for writing down shots, long Q-tips for cleaning cameras and lenses, alcohol swabs if you were to need, some extra masks, and uh, looks like that's it. Next, we move on to the leftmost interior pocket, which is not removable. And in this pocket, I have miscellaneous video cables and extraneous cables. And then I also have a shotgun microphone, which goes on the camera. Let's go to the right side. So on the right side, on the outmost pocket, I have, okay, so like uh, a sash for putting on your tape loop. Essentially, it's just a rope that you put on your belt and a uh, Leatherman Wave Plus multi-tool, which is the best multi-tool that you can get in the camera department. There's just no question. actually pretty hard to get those off which is probably a good thing so this is a bigger bulkier kind of side pocket um, it's got more space than the other one does and of course it's completely optional with the velcro on the back and the padded loops that you can use on this one I've got some basics I've got just a bunch of fine tip sharpies dry erase marker I think down there I also have a USB stick and some storage media just like extra stuff that I've thrown in there along the way and then inside I have, well, a bunch of things. I have a full size Allen key kit, which I mean, you're in the camera department, it comes in handy. I have a brush, just in case you need to brush things, of course. And then I have a lint roller as well, because you never know when that lint is gonna strike. Now onto the right most non-detachable pocket. We go in here and we have some pretty important things. Uh, first is a battery operated light. So this is an on-camera light that can be mounted Okay, so there's a broken piece in it, but it still does work. We have a, yeah, there we go. So I really like this light. It's an older Aperture Amaran product. I don't think they sell it anymore, but essentially what it is is it's an LED light that's got this little diffusion panel right at the front and a twisty knob that turns it on and off. And uh, it runs off of, uh, what are those big Sony style batteries? I have a bunch of them in here. It runs off that, but if you run out of those, it actually has built in, it has a double A slot for it. So these are this is full of double A's right now. And it's, uh, it's a great light because yeah, it can run off double A's. And if you're in a pinch and don't have any double A's, you can just scavenge the eight odd double A's that this thing takes. I love it even if I'm just using it to search around in kind of a dark environment. I love to keep it on the cart and it's a great light. So I keep it in my bag. Also here we have the external monitor, which is a Atmos Ninja V, uh, my favorite monitor, my favorite external recorder, and it lives in the side of my bag. All right, so let's get to the really important stuff. And uh, that is uh, water, water. You should be drinking water on set. Uh, it's important that you have water with you. Now this is empty because I drank all my water and uh, I still keep the bottle with me. So if you're not drinking water on set, what are you doing? I can't really see in the front, uh, but we're gonna attempt to figure out what's in the front here. So we have, uh... okay, so first of all, 
a color card if you're going to match colors between cameras very important and a three-part gray card uh gray white black which is also very helpful for matching colors in your camera now we have okay so cables cables are very important uh and i appear to be missing some from my last shoot so uh right now i just have a single black extension cord in here which is pretty much bog standard for what i carry in the front usually is also an hdmi cable happens to be on the camera right now and a xlr cable just in case i need a backup so those are typically the cables that i carry okay so we're getting into the important stuff but before we do we have to flip the bag around and show you what's in the back of the bag. It's a tiny little thin slot that, uh, well, you don't even have to guess what's in here because they advertise it on their site. Shape says that you need to put your... That wasn't what I thought it was. I was gonna say it's, you put your slate back there, but uh, at some point in time, I put a, just like a, like a, like a paper holder uh, in there, which, yeah, I'm, it works. Do I have a sl I don't even have my slate in there. So uh, usually there's a slate back there. Uh, I just happen to have a paper holder, which uh, as, you, as you would, whatever you want. Before we go on the inside of the bag, I'm just gonna flip it back around. I would like to say that I really like all the mounting points on the bag. Like, first of all, this V right at the top, that's all Velcro. You can just put stuff on there if you want. I've seen camera operators put little tags and patches and whatnot on there, which is really cool. Um, along the side, there's all those different whoosh, all those different like ribbings kind of areas where you can tie things. Uh, there is Velcro as well in the V's on the sides, which is really cool. Right about here, you got Velcro. And um, like overall, the bag is super versatile and you can just kind of mount whatever you want to it. It's a very convenient bag. Now I'm going to attempt to show you what's on the inside while being behind the bag. And that uh, is gonna be difficult for me. So please bear with me. Uh, this zips up, but it actually just holds via a magnet, which is really cool as well. So there's a little bit of resistance. You're pulling up Ooh. and we're going inside the bag. So let's start with the lid. The top has four different compartments, four different quadrants for things, Ooh. for things that you can put in it. And we're gonna start with the uh, bottom left. So if you look at the bottom left, this is where I store my filters. So we have a Tiffin Pro Mist filter that I use in a pretty big size just for all lenses if I want to get a bit of diffusion. And then I have my variable, uh, what are these called? Variable ND filters, uh, which I also use in a big size and I kind of just bring down to uh, the other sides, which is cool. Uh, this is just a like independent freelancer type thing, but I have a bunch of business cards in here uh, just in case I need them. You never know when you'll need to be networking. It's very good. Moving around to the bottom right corner, you can probably already see what's in there but essentially it's it's just cables it's cables galore we've got little hdmi cables we've got big hdmi cables we've got USB C cables we've got more i tend to double up on the hdmis the small ones because they're they're pretty convenient to have around little i don't know if it's like 30 centimeter and 50 centimeter hdmi cables but they're very awesome to have around especially if you're using them on a gimbal or kind of like a small camera rig where there's a monitor really close by so i tend to kind of double even triple up on those, which is really good. Moving on to my top left, uh, we're going into some wireless HDMI. So this is really cool. This is the Hollyland, I think it's called the 300 Pro. This is the Hollyland 300 Pro. This is the Hollyland Mars 300 Pro wireless HDMI transmitter receiver kit, which I use to uh, help monitor my feed. I give a client a, a monitor and then I allow them to watch the camera as we're going along and shooting. It's also great for setting up a small little video village. So we have a transmitter and a receiver, which is really good. And then because I was out of space in that bottom area with the filters, I have my step up, step down rings. And then I also have the mount for the transmitter. Uh, yeah, the transmitter onto the camera so I can mount these without hassle. So we only have one space left and um, this one's also pretty obvious as to what it is, it's batteries. We got a ton of batteries in the top here, starting with one that you can't get off the shelf. I have a gimbal handle battery in here. This is a spare just in case I need it, but I typically run the DJI Ronin RS2 gimbal and I need a battery in here, number one battery. So it's good to have an extra, you know, just in case you need it. And then I'm not gonna take all these out cause there's a bunch, but I have a bunch of charged AA batteries ready to go. And then I have an extra nine volt as well, which is a specialty battery that only my microphone uses so good to have an extra one of those on hand 
And then before we kind of look away from this top area, one of the best, best things about this bag, it might seem small, but you're really gonna love it if you get this bag, is the fact that these bottom two zippers have built-in LED searchlights that are just press fitted. They work based off pressure. So if you'll look at the bottom here, we have just a little LED and there's two of them too. They're adorable. They run off a little watch battery, which is replaceable. And what you do is you just use this as you're looking inside your camera bag when it's dark, that's gotta be the best attention to detail I've ever seen. I love that in a camera bag. That is absolutely sick. And you know, overall, as just a generic comment, I would say that the qualities of this bag are, you know, as good as I would have expected, if not better. Everything's really thick. It's really robust. I haven't had it for that long, just being a working bag for about six months, but so far everything has stood up to the test of time and the wear and tear of freelance filmmaking. So not too bad. Now we're gonna get into the serious stuff, which, might be a bit anticlimactic because the big serious stuff is actually just filming me on the uh, tripod. On the tripod, we have uh, my Sony FX3, which is my kind of run and gun system that I like to cart around in this little bag. And it's great for my needs. I have a 24 to 70 Sigma 2.8 lens on it. And then I also have the kind of optional, kind of not optional audio XLR handle, which I also love. It's in a small rig cage and I got a few extra bells and whistles on the camera itself, but that's my main rig. And that goes right in the center here. Uh, there's a little space for it to drop in as it's already fully constructed. I do, however, have the base of the cage, which I can show you, which goes right in there. So a couple small rig parts, these rods, the base, a lens support and a cheese plate on the end. And the camera goes smack dab in the middle. Then I place that right down in the middle as well. So. It's good to keep the camera in the center of the bag just to keep it not so topsy-turvy and wobbly. Keeps everything nice and balanced. And the FX3 with a 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter lens fits excellently right in the center of the bag. Next, we'll move off to this side. So uh, this is a little more messy, but essentially it's just a bag. It's a bag full of things. A clear bag from, this is a famous company. I'm trying to remember, Porta Brace. So this is a bag from Porta Brace. I have a few of these translucent style bags. They're very heavy, very durable. This is what I would consider the grip and miscellaneous bag. So if we toss away, well, first of all, at the top, I have my action camera. This is the DJI action. I think it's the two. It might not be the two. I think this is just the DJI action camera, essentially a, a different style of the GoPro action cameras that are super popular. And I use this to film behind the scenes or time lapses of production. So that has a permanent spot in my bag, along with sticky pads, extra batteries, uh, all sorts of little accessories that you use when you're using an action camera. So we have that. And then in here, there's really too much to go through individually, but essentially this is grip material. So we have extra handles, extra mounting pieces. We have uh, different options for the, um, what's it called? The what's it called? The type, the small rig mounting system that, uh, that everyone loves. It's not screws. It's that, ah, oh, it's gonna come to me. I forget what it's called, but it's, it's like this. I forget what this is. It's something. It's got a lot of these. Uh, we have uh, different gears. If we want to use follow focuses, we have an actual follow focus. And then everyone's favorite, the camera duster, all that stuff and more is in this little grip bag and it goes right off to the side. Now we move into perhaps some of the most tightly compacted area of the camera bag. What I've done is split it into three sections. And then this section I've split into three additional sections. So we have three sections to go through. The first of which is actually a bag from Shape. This bag comes with your S bag when you get it. It's a little pouch that can be mounted on the outside, but I choose to stuff it on the inside because it houses some pretty important things. Uh, not this stuff on the outside. So this is my mini grip bag. It's got mini gaff tapes. It's got little marking tools for camera marking. It's got uh, bongo ties and it also has extra lens covers and stuff like that. But on this side, on the flip side of the bag, we have some really important stuff, which is our, which is our recording media. So all the stuff that just fell in my bag. We have uh, Atomos Media, which goes into the recorder, and then we have SD card and uh, uh, CF Express type media in the uh, case as well. So all the recording media, including the tool we use to read the recording media, go in that extra bag. And um, yeah, it's good stuff, really. We move into the little middle slot that I've created here, and that's 
you're probably expecting it. That's all batteries. We have a ton of batteries in this little area here. Just dawned on me that you can't really see into the bag. So I'm just going to tilt it up a bit. One, two, three. Right here we have, uh, we have uh, batteries and battery charger. So we have a multi-charger here, which is really nice. Just a wall plug-in allows me to charge multiple batteries. And then we have a ton of these MP style. What are these MP? What is the type? We have a ton of these MPF style batteries in here, probably nine, um, just because everything I have runs off these batteries. So we have multiple instances of these batteries. And because they're a nice uniform rectangular shape, they all work really well stacked on top of each other like Jenga blocks and mixed in with them. We have a little space for multiple of these tiny camera batteries, these Sony FZ batteries, these Sony uh, MPFZ batteries, which power the FX3 and some of my other Sony cameras. I have five of them in here and they're all stacked in there as well. So multiple batteries, a charger, uh, different types of batteries. It's all good stuff. And then if you could believe it, I have three additional lenses packed into this small little compartment right at the bottom there, which is, uh, well, a feat in itself. So the first one we have packed in is the good old Sony 70 to 200 F4. We reach in a little farther and we have, uh, we have a Sony, uh, 35 millimeter 1.8 prime lens, which is really good for use on a gimbal. Nice and small, very light. I like this lens a lot. And then buried at the bottom under the 35, we have our interview bread and butter, the 85-1.8 from Sony, which uh, is also a lens that I can't live without. It's great. So typically when I carry this bag around, I carry four lenses around, which is pretty overkill, but it covers everything that I need in terms of what I shoot. Uh, typically when I'm carrying this bag around, which I like. So that is my Shape S bag, the bag that I carry all my camera gear in whenever I go out for a shoot. Now I'm challenging you. I want to know what your camera bag looks like. Is it a backpack? Is it something perhaps larger? Don't ask me how much this weighs, by the way. It gets very heavy when everything's bogged down. If you have suggestions for how I can improve my camera carry setup, or if you have questions about some of the products that I've shown off today, I can do my best to answer them in the comments. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.